Hello and welcome again to another episode of SQL tutorial videos. This time we, were, we are talking about the delete statements. So you know that I covered up insert and updates for heaps and clustered indexes. In this session we will talk about uh, delete statements or deletions in heaps and clustered indexes. Because it's actually not that difficult uh, and not highly sophisticated so we can handle both type of tables in one session. Remember that a heap table is nothing else than just a bunch of tables and we just uh, organize them in an IAM page or in an IAM page chain. So if we have a row in a heap table, we have basically just a row in a data page. So if you remember how a data page is structured, we have basically the header right here. We have then the rows, um, assuming we have only leaf levels, which of course in a heap is always true. And then we have here in the bottom right we have the offset array so the offset array basically tells us uh, how many bytes I have to skip to find the appropriate row so the first row slot is always at uh, the offset 96 since we have 96 bytes okay so we found the first uh, row at 96 bytes I know that, uh, uh, that hexadecimal 96 is not decimal 96 but just to make it sure and to make it clear I uh, wrote the 69 here 96 here so uh, the first row you find in the first offset slot, then the second row you find here, the third row you find here, and so on and so forth. That's how SQL Server ensures that we find the row slots at the appropriate position to skip X bytes to find the next row, the, the row that is stated here. So if you delete now a row from a heap, nothing else happened than just that the row is getting deleted. May means that, okay, the row is just getting striked out again if we look at the at this in sql server management studio which we will right afterwards we will see we see slot zero we don't see slot one anymore but we see slot two three and so on and so forth still but what happened is not that the that the, that the data is really gone from it it's just basically flagged as deleted and you see still we will see it that the offset array doesn't even change so if the offset array does not change that means that the, situ uh, the positions of the subsequent rows did not change and that means that the space that, that row 2 or slot 1 in this case took is not actually freed it's still there it's still allocated you can't get rid of it so when you delete rows of a heap it stays allocated space until you rebuild the whole table it's even true if you delete all of the rows on the page your offset array will basically also be gone then but still if you have a look at the DMVs or the system management uh, objects in SQL Server you will realize that this page will be still allocated and signed uh, and uh, put to the heaps uh, responsibility so that we don't even free our heap or even though we deleted everything from it it's still occupies the space and it won't free it until you rebuild the whole table. Okay, so meet me here in the management studio. We first create a simple table that is just an ID, uh, identity column and a character 1000 column that is called value. Then we insert 40 times to make sure that we allocate more than just one page, 40 times um, some values in it. And then we have a look at what got actually allocated and here you see exactly eight pages so this is the IAM pages as you see at the flag right here so this one means that this is this is the IAM page on the file one and those subsequent eight pages are a full uh, uniform extent as you probably know as you can see here we have six of the pages allocated if we now have a look at uh, one of the pages we just see the uh, usual thing so he, we can see right here the data we inserted so uh, this is slot one so this is id2 and so on and so forth slot uh, two and id3 so if we go now here and have a look at the offset array of this um, page we see it right in the, at the bottom let me copy this here for you so you can see right here that is a snapshot of the page right now so if we want to delete now this the, the the entry of ID three, and we have another look at the at the same page again. We will see that the entry actually got deleted. So we have here slot one with a two and x, and then the next slot is 
3 with the ID 4 so ID uh, so slot 2 with ID 3 is not there anymore but if you now have a look at the offset array at the bottom you will realize already if you compare this with this that the offsets are exactly the same okay for our slot 2 it's stated with 0 x 0 because there is nothing there anymore we deleted it but the subsequent pages have the exact same offset in bytes that means it does not get compressed it didn't get, it did not get compressed it did not get freed or anything the data is still there we just don't uh, have it in our offset array anymore but still we can't use the data anymore at the space anymore and we can't really uh, shrink this whole thing so if we now delete everything from that heap you will see again in our view here that still all of those six pages are allocated although we would expect only one page because every database needs one page okay we have always the IAM page and we expect one data page but we don't expect all six of them to be still allocated so this is actually happening with heaps and we can't actually free the space until we do a rebuild table with clustered indexes, we have a slightly different situation. As you may recall, in the clustered index, we don't only have data pages or leaf pages. We have also pages uh, that contain pointers to the data pages or to the other intermediate nodes, so-called index pages. So in this very simple scenario where I uh, omitted the right part of the B tree, we have a small B tree with the root node and intermediate node, and here we have some two data pages, okay? It's just very simplified. So if I, what happens now in a, in a clustered index if I delete something? So if I delete a row here, it gets equally flagged to delete it. It's not actually deleted. You see this, um, we will see this in Management Studio later, it is actually then a ghost record, it becomes a ghost record and that means it's still there but we can't use it if uh, we need space on that page we will reuse the ghost flag record okay so if I delete it and insert the same thing again it will use the space if I delete it and uh, fill up the page and need the space as well it will be reused because a SQL server will reuse the ghost record um, if, if it's flagged and still there also this technique is good for doing a fast rollback. So imagine you deleted some row and you want to do a rollback or you have to do a rollback, then it just the flag gets unflagged and you don't need actually to delete or to insert new data. We just have to reflag uh, a small thing. So what happens with ghost records over the time? Over the time, a process called ghost cleanup runs and this this process takes the, all the ghost records in your uh, pages and really physically removes them from them, okay? This is basically happening every five so or so minutes. It's basically like a garbage collector. If you imagine C Sharp or Java, then you uh, know what a garbage collector is. It's basically the same thing. It uh, frees this, uh, the pages from the flagged ghost records. So what happens now if we delete all rows from a page, okay? So imagine we also delete this row. Then, of course, the ghost cleanup process will take away both records, okay? And also the page header will be flagged and say, okay, I have only ghost records. I can be deleted as well. And that will happen. So if a leaf page only contains ghost record, it will be also eliminated. If this uh, page will get eliminated here, then this intermediate node will also know, okay, listen, I have a pointer to a page that got eliminated or that it is about to get el eliminated because it contains only ghost record, then this page will be here uh, erased as well so that the B tree is able to actually shrink a little bit, okay? This will happen for subsequent levels as well so that you have a dynamic um, B tree that also reduces data uh, space and not only um, yeah increases it. This is a very big difference and a very very important difference to heap tables. So now the same thing for a cluster index table. I do the exact same thing. Just uh, the difference is here that we create a cluster index by using the the words primary key in the create statement. Now let's insert again 40 rows and have a look at the page allocation. As you can see here, this is quite similar. We have eight pages, this is the extent, and we have here also the IAM page, of course. Then if we have a look at, for instance, this page, 
we will see this is just an ordinary page that holds our data 1x um, 2x and so on and so forth so let's delete again ID 3 and have another look at the page so as you can see here, uh, right after slot 1, where we have the page header for slot 2, we see here uh, the entry record type go starter record. So this subsequent record is a go starter. It's still here, 3x, but it's ghost data. So if we wait now a while and redo the statement, the row will actually be gone. As you can see right here, we have 1x, 2x, and you see already here that the page header for the subsequent page is actually for 4x. So uh, slot 2 follows slot 1 and so you see that the, the space was reused and all the data got compressed. So we reused actually the space and that's it. So if we now delete all of the rows, we have again to wait for a few minutes. And if you do this statement again, you can see already here that we have not allocated all the pages anymore. We have still allocated the IAM page which, which is completely clear because we cannot get rid of the IAM page of course. We have here two pages still allocated and you may wonder what those are. So let's look at this page. What is this page actually containing? As you can see this is the root page because in the bottom area we have here the list of child pages. So the root node of course has to stay because it is the root node you know <laughs> it has to stay it can't be deleted. And the first uh, leaf node also has to stay because it's, this is the, the definition in SQL Server. So as we can see here, the uh, 2408 is the child page and if we have a look at it, you see here that nothing is on it. You see here in the page header that this is a go starter record, this is the last one that was here, this is the 7 actually, and it has to remain here because we cannot get rid of the first data page and we can also not get rid of the root node of a clustered index page. So those will stay, but this is basically it. The IAM, the root, and the first data page will stay. The rest will really go away and we will be reclaimed by other processes. So a clustered index, as you can see, frees its space automatically due to ghost cleanup process. Thank you for watching and tune in next video on Sunday when I release another video about SQL Server. Bye.